Greetings, hello, hello. <laughs> Ashes kicking buttons, things are breaking, and welcome back to another episode of the Blockument. Oh, oh. Ooh, ooh, crypto education through everyday conversations. My name's Nate Talbot. I'm the executive director of Detroit Blockchain Center, and to my right is the illustrious <laughs> Ashley Rose. I am an everyday mother, I'm an online reseller, and I'm on a journey to figure out what in the heck is going on with all of this crypto, Bitcoin, Ethereum, pick your coin, <laughs> bears and nails. I can tell you what's going on <laughs> as of this block heights, new all-time highs, and nobody's even talking, talking. about it. Really? It's I've, crazy, I've nobody. I've seen people talking about it. Or maybe it's because I hang with the cool kids. Only we are talking about it. (laughs) Bitcoin has surged past 70,000 as of this block height. I think we're around 69 as of this exact moment. Mm -hmm. I could tell you. 69,500. I could tell you where we're at. Tell me where we're at. We are at block height uh, 834,060. This block size is... 1.85 1.85 megabytes, uh-huh. and that is um, comprised of 1,447 transactions, uh-huh. <laughs> and the total subsidies and fees for that were 1.409 Bitcoin. All right. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that equals 445,202 USD. The winners of that lovely sum of money are Luxor. Luxor in the house. (laughs) 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 Yep. So this is where we're at. We only have about, I guess it's about 30 days or so left until uh, that subsidy of 6.5. Was it two five Bitcoin is uh, reduced to three point seven something? Yeah, math something like that. Yeah, public math. <laughs> public maths. For the record, we're this is our second show of the day, and yeah. oh, he's breaking stuff. <laughs> I'm breaking the studio. Yeah, it's all right. All time highs means I can afford it, mm-hmm. and <laughs> that's right. And so. Everything we know, I feel, about um, Bitcoin and its price and our prediction models is now garbage. Perfect. <laughs> we're starting All right, so from we're, scratch. Yeah, we're starting the show from scratch. Here we go. <laughs> no, well, it's because when you're doing, when you're trying to evaluate how much Bitcoin is worth, you're really just doing a conversion rate, right? and that's only based off of history, right? One Bitcoin is worth one Bitcoin as far as Bitcoin is concerned. Right. Um, but when you're trying to compare it to dollars, all you have is the past price points to run off of. Right. And this last cycle has destroyed every single narrative I can think of. Um, pre-2020. Oh, I see right? where you're going with this. Now, 2017, this, this started, but pre-2020, at least part of the bull market mm-hmm. was due to Bitcoin was the only way to onboard in. Mm. So even the 2017 bull market, before as ICOs mm-hmm. were getting started, Ethereum being the first one, right? You had to buy Bitcoin. And then like swap it into. Or... To swap it into alts, which helped drive the price of Bitcoin up. Uh. Right? Um, this last market... You had like Robin Hood, Coinbase is now like a huge casino of whatever you want. <laughs> um, all of them really are. Yeah. You have very few like Bitcoin only exchanges or ones that only do like a top 10 crypto um, thing. So now if you have dollars you're trying to convert into the ecosystem, you can bypass Bitcoin. So the 2020 was the smallest Bitcoin pump we've seen in the history of Bitcoin bull markets. Because in 2020, you could, Bitcoin wasn't the only on-ramp. Is that correct? 
Correct. So make sure I'm understanding. Go directly, you can go okay. directly to fiat, to a stable coin, okay. to alts, or you can just okay. use an exchange and go directly to the alt. Okay. And so they saw the direct effect of those pumps. And then once you had the COVID and lockdown and people were bored, Robinhood bringing crypto on, right. and that's a casino in and of itself, mm -hmm. stock, crypto, or otherwise. And, and free money for everybody, too. And free money for everybody yeah. to gamble on, right? You have all of that. And yeah. I, I just realized we haven't announced I it yet, but <laughs> that ghost voice you just yeah. heard... <laughs> is our guest <laughs> of the day. We're just so hyped to get into the content and material. <laughs> right, right. So we got Brian the Crypto Sharks in the house. What's going on, Brian? Hey, what's up? What's going on? Welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you. Um, he's. We've been on, you've been here for past episodes. Yeah. We just, uh, potentially the last one future aired, ones. <laughs> potentially future ones. The last one that aired, I think we were talking about uh, Bitcoin and crypto in, in developing nations mm -hmm. and, and whatnot. So go check that episode out. Uh, but yeah, so that narrative is broke, right? You can on-ramp into the space yeah. and not touch Bitcoin. Then on top of that, you have um, the last... For the first time ever during the bear market, Bitcoin dropped below the previous all-time high. That had never happened before, mm -hmm. right? So, like, that high 19,000 was the all-time high. Okay. Typically, if you use history, mm -hmm. Bitcoin would never, ever go below. Once it clearly breaks, mm -hmm. that, it, that, that trend, becomes the new floor. that becomes the new floor. It never, But it's never even touched the floor before once it clearly broke the mm. floor, right? It might mm -hmm. bounce around it for a while. Right. Um, we went down to fifteen thousand. We went four thousand dollars below the all time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you have every prediction chart, all the rainbow charts, and you know the Plan B. All every every one of those models, Bitcoin has broken that trend, not by much, but broken the trend. If if you're going to be a technical you can't be like well it's technical except for in the mm -hmm. two plus two equals four except for when it's five yeah mm -hmm. right you've you've broken the model um and then just recently um a few th few thousand blocks ago we uh broke the all-time high which usually introduces the bull run it's never happened before the halving mm -hmm. usually it takes about six months after the having, oh. this time it happened before uh, almost a month and a half before the having. Mm -hmm. And the six months is true for 2017 and 2020. Yep. Oh. Yep. The having was in um, I think March of 2020. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was still April, March or April of 2020. Mm-hmm. And then we didn't really cross and break into that um, bull run territory until close to November. This usually happens right around the U.S. presidential election cycle, mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. the when the market bumps, mm -hmm. and even with COVID, printing money, election cycles, with all those things, uh, unrest in America, unrest everywhere, mm -hmm. right? Economies collapsing. It still waited until about six months, say four to six months mm -hmm. after the having for it to really clear and break all time highs. Mm -hmm. Um. Not this time. <laughs> We're at 70,000. If you're not actively in the community, nobody's talking about it. Yeah. It's starting to hear, but there's no mania. No. There's yeah. no nothing, which means it's probably not going to happen until, well, who knows? Who knows? If you start just thinking psychology, you would think the mainstream population, till it crosses 100,000, they won't even start paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because for them, for most people, what's the difference between 70,000 and 85,000? Nothing, yeah. Right. There's a difference when you got to hit a hundred thousand. Yeah. And this is, you know, I have my own personal philosophy about um, Bitcoin pricing, right? Usually it's like a a 10x in the swing, right? When Bitcoin was trading for like 10 bucks, mm -hmm. you'd see huge news on it going up single digit dollars. Mm -hmm. When it crossed a hundred dollars, nobody cared unless it was double digit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When it was a thousand dollars, you had to be hundred dollar mm -hmm. swings. Mm -hmm. Now we've been in the Just tens of thousands. Yeah, who cares if it goes up or down a thousand dollars now? Yeah. yeah. In twenty seventeen, a thousand dollar swing? Yeah. Wow. Right. Um and so now when you're talking about six figure yeah. Bitcoin, if that trend holds, yeah. then you're talking about if it's not a ten thousand wick move yeah who cares it kind of hyped me up I feel like i want to go like well, put that, a little money this in this <laughs> puts in the emphasis on how much how much 
people underestimate what the price movement will do. Mm-hmm. You know, we've always, again, another previous trend broke, right? Well, you break the all-time high, and then it usually rescinds down about, it could go up to 30%, right? That's, over 30% is like, wait, what's going on? Yeah. But 30%, 20%, that's normal. We broke the all-time high for the first time, it dropped 12%. And then recovered like within a couple hours. Yeah. This last, this last. This one. last one when we broke sixty nine thousand. So it went down less and recovered quicker. Yeah. Wow. So that's like a raging bull. Sounds like. Well, or <laughs> but nobody's talking about it. How yeah. can it be yeah. a raging bull and nobody is talking about? Maybe I know in this area, in the Detroit yeah. area, right? A lot of people know I've doxed myself, so a lot of people know me. As the Bitcoin crypto guy, what's going on, guy? Yeah, I get the calls, I get the hits on LinkedIn, yeah. I get the hits on Twitter. What's going on? Hey, hey, these yeah. are all the no coiners or yeah. sold coiners or whatever. Yeah, nobody's hitting me up. Interesting. The people that I would use as Why? benchmarks as Why? I bull market. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So while technically we're there, nobody's talking about it. And if nobody's talking about it at seventy. They're probably not going to talk about it till 100. Mm-hmm. Oh. And if that's where they're going to start, and you're talking about 10,000 wick candles I for see. it to be anything, right? You're saying because the price swing up is not big enough for people to care. Right. Wow. I care. Which means 100,000, <laughs> then you're looking at much bigger numbers. You're not yeah. talking about 100 to 110,000. You're talking about 100,000, 150,000, right. 200,000, 200,000. Right. If it's not hitting those benchmarks, nobody yeah. cares. Mm-hmm. It's not like headline worthy. Right. Yeah. So this isn't price prediction. This isn't financial advice. I'm not mm-hmm. telling you to go all in or a little in or do whatever. The, the money part's really the least interesting part of it all. Freedom is the best part of all of this. But that being said, <laughs> it's like yeah, people are mass underestimating what Bitcoin can do. And during this bull market, um, the... Uh, Wow. The um, Bank of International Settlements a year and a half ago, uh, we covered this on the What is Money episode. Um, they had announced about a year and a half ago their future um, policies that banks can operate off of. Starting in 2025, every central bank that's under the Bank of International Settlements authority can now start holding 2% of their value in Bitcoin and crypto. Mm-hmm. So. You think? Oh wow! You think these ETFs right have brought volume in? Oh wow! Yeah. Uh, you, we it's haven't insane. seen two yeah, percent of like trillions and trillions of dollars. Right. So, well, yeah, trillions and trillions of dollars. So, I mean, Bitcoin's at like a, almost a trillion I, and a I, half market yeah, cap I, now. I think I think like two days ago or like three days ago, um, it reached like a billion dollars in volume in one day. Mm-hmm. And that's like the most traded ETF in history, in yep. volume. Um, we're cleaning up the table here. We. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, it's it's crazy, and this isn't even what the show is about. We don't do much say, financial wait. stuff on the show. We're not talking about the pumponomics of it all, but it uh it sort of leads to yeah. what i think the question of the day is yeah. which is how can we increase adoption how can we increase adoption yeah what do you mean well i feel like um in order for bitcoin or cryptos to be considered i guess taken seriously on like a world scale and like be used as money or like actual value out in the world it needs adoption like it needs to be used and not just like hoarded and there needs it needs to be like convenient and easy but like how like how i guess my question is like how can someone like me or someone like our viewer kind of like get started in like their steps towards adoption like um, if they own a store, how can they maybe take it, take it in, or um, an online business, or if they want to pay somebody in it, or if they want to like maybe pay their babysitter with it? Like I'm gonna I'm gonna pretext it with sort of insight from me. I want to hear Brian's take though because mm-hmm. part of the pretext. But a I think I agree with those who believe that hoarding it is a use case, specifically mm-hmm. Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. 
Bitcoin doesn't claim to be a utility token, mm -hmm. right? It's not how you power whatever. It's used to transfer value. And sometimes you don't want to transfer the value, right? Real estate, you don't want to transfer the value daily. Right. So you hold it. Gold, mm -hmm. you don't want to transfer the value daily or monthly or even yearly. You mm -hmm. hold it. Mm -hmm. Holding is a use case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like parking your parking your wealth so that way you can still maintain the same purchasing power or greater. Yeah. Okay. Its use case is being able to use it in the future, mm -hmm. not use it now. Okay. Versus a utility token is supposed to be like when we had Althea on, we're talking about the internet. Yeah. Well, that's now usage. Right. I need to use it now because I need the access to the information now. Mm -hmm. This is about future usage, so I think holding is a use case. So, do you think Bitcoin like isn't necessarily great for like um, everyday usage? Well, that's the other part about this whole thing. But this is where I want to get Brian's context because I'm going to be talking from a very uh, Amero Euro Western point of view, mm -hmm. right? Oh, I see. European American. Yeah. These. Uh, I think the I think the fairest way to call it is your world dominating currency mm -hmm. point of view. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't have the same needs as somebody in Nigeria or Guatemala right. or whatever. Right. Um. But I, I don't think personally. I'm sort of. I'm happy nobody's talking about Bitcoin yet or crypto in the mainstream. I sort of secretly hope that. <laughs> people are still sort of burnt from the last time and don't because I don't think we're ready. Mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons I'm a Bitcoin most mm -hmm. right? I, I thought you were going to say so you could pack your bags some more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just want to chuck my bag. Screw boys. them people. Yeah. No. Like, wow, that's new. No, it's not because of that. It's because, you, you know, A, yeah. there's the how you just, how money has to become, how it has to grow and evolve into having all three of those traits of money. If you know what I'm talking about, that's going to be left at a cliffhanger. So you go check out our what is money episode. <laughs> um, but you have to have all three traits of money. But I think store of value is the first one. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the technology and why I'm a Bitcoin most mm -hmm. um and I'm just interested in the technology that a lot of these, some of, not even a lot, a couple of these other um, cryptos offer, is because if you can't, Bitcoin is the simplest. All of them will tell you, this is the point, if you look at the entire 30 billion cryptos out there, yeah, they'll all tell you that we do something Bitcoin doesn't, but better. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And if they're not saying Bitcoin, they're saying we do something Ethereum does, what's better. And then Ethereum's saying, well, we do what Bitcoin does, but better, right? Yeah. So everybody's comparing to Bitcoin. Right. Well, why doesn't Bitcoin do it better? Why can't Bitcoin do Ethereum? No, I don't they, think. They I think there is at. a loud piece of the population, small but loud piece of population, who don't want to, which is sort of fine. Mm -hmm. I think they shouldn't have to want to. Yeah. Um, but that's not why. The why is because we're well beyond the tested out phase in Bitcoin. People are holding their wealth in Bitcoin. You now have the ETF, so people have retirement funds in Bitcoin. Mm. If you want this to be any kind of successful in the future, you don't play around with it. I don't test out, I wonder what happens if I do this to my roof in the <laughs> house I live in. Right. Because if I break it, now I'm rained on every day, right? right? right, right. I don't play with the foundation. Does it really need this structure? Does it really right. need this support? Like jenga it. <laughs> yeah, you don't Jenga your own crib. You do that with a test property or something yeah. if you're that experimental. Right. You don't Jenga with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to get harder and harder to make changes. And it needs... I think some changes. I don't know if Bitcoin Core, the actual software, needs changes, or we need to keep getting smarter on how we can do some things. So I don't think it's ready for adoption, mainstream adoption. Mm -hmm. And if Bitcoin ain't ready, and it's the simplest yeah. version of all of them, none of it's ready mm -hmm. for but mainstream what adoption. Like for, what would it look like for Bitcoin to be ready for adoption? Like, What is that like? That's what I'm going to pass it off oh. to Brian because, again, I have the Western. HODL is the number one use case for most oh, people in the U.S. I see. That's not saying. true elsewhere. Give us a little background of where, you're, you, where you come from, your, your, so how I'm, you grew I'm, up. I'm from, I'm from Guatemala. Um, I'm from Guatemala, and I, you know, I, I experienced, like, both um, 
sides of, of life mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because you can see like really poor people over there. Um, I'm uh, Guatemala is right next to El Salvador, so um, you know it's it's kind of the same thing, right? Um, but if you ask me what I think like about Bitcoin adoption, to me, to me is I don't I don't know if I want adoption like that. Like we are gonna transact Bitcoin on our daily basis, like. I don't. I don't think that that's like even possible as of right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it as a, as a yes, as a way of uh, that I can store my uh, like value. I don't uh, like. I don't like spending it. I just don't like it. Mm -hmm. I I rather just spend like you know Dogecoin or like those coins. Um, but Bitcoin, I don't even trade it. Right. <laughs> because it, it's like. It's, the risk is is, is, is is so high if I'm trading it, like I'm trading, I'm risking something that in the future can be, you know, like... Well, like he was saying, like the roof on your house, like you, you don't want to risk the roof on your house. Exactly. But, but And it doesn't make sense. Like, for example, for people uh, like, you know, like people from Guatemala or people from El Salvador or people right. from those countries, like even if, if you tell them Bitcoin is going to 2x from here, they're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna invest in Bitcoin because they're like, okay, it's it's at seventy thousand dollars right now. First, I don't have the money, so a lot of people don't don't think that like they don't know that they can buy like you know fractions of Bitcoin. They think that they still think that they need to buy one. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's funny, but yes, they some people don't know. Uh, um, so yeah, I, I I I don't think that. Do you think do you think like people like in your group? Um, yeah. So from like Latin America, do you yeah. think that they would benefit from adoption? Do you think that they want that um, like fair access or uh, like yeah, would it be fair access to money or like I don't know, I don't know. I'm just no. I, I think in, I think that mouth, people but. like people. That's the thing. So people that have money, they want to store, like they want to, you know, keep their money. They don't want to make more money. Like they they have money. Like even people that I know here, you know, they're millionaires already. Like they don't care about the price. It's not like, oh, I want Bitcoin to go to, uh, to 200K yeah, but I'm so I can the make money. There. So the people there is the same because the people there, like, they, you know, they want to make money. They want to change their life. Mm -hmm. So they're not putting their money into Bitcoin. The only people that are putting the money into Bitcoin is people that want to keep their money. Right. We, we've sort of talked about um, some of this before, right? Where Bitcoin, there's a there's a big misconception because it's called, it is, and it's called freedom money, right? Um, among other things. And that gives the perception that it's like the... It's going to level the playing field on economic disparities. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in Bitcoin directly that's going to do that. That may be an eventual side effect, maybe, mm -hmm. but it doesn't do that. It provides access. It provi it's the first thing you don't need to be geographically or um, theoretically close to the source mm -hmm. because you are the source. If you mm -hmm. run your own node, Right. If you're totally sovereign with it, you are the source mm -hmm. of that. And you can have access people in Guatemala. Um, right. Or many, many places, even here in the U.S., mm -hmm. some um, don't have access. And that prevents everything else. If you mm -hmm. only have two dimes to rub together, mm -hmm. you're probably not rubbing them together to get some Bitcoin mm -hmm. because you have more yeah. imminent needs than yeah. future wealth mm -hmm. you need to build wealth today and this is you don't even need to build wealth you need to eat mm -hmm. but isn't there a mm -hmm. isn't there a case to make and say that like some place like let's say like venezuela where their dollar is just like crashing by the second uh -huh. couldn't wouldn't they want something like bitcoin to transact in so that way like what they make today they can spend they want stable coins mm -hmm. they want dollars mm -hmm. they want dollars that's the thing mm. so it would so i guess so then my question would be is there any point to adoption for crypto like is there any need for it or is there like why is it i feel like it's something that i've heard and that's why i asked this question right because uh, because when we talk about those things when we talk about peer-to-peer -peer cash in that type of regard you're talking about a system that's flushed out right 
dollars weren't very good at being dollars in the beginning mm -hmm. because people had local banknotes and localized currencies. They had a whole different thing. And the only reason dollars was able to sort of splurge above all of that, or fiat, I should say, splurge, is because you were forced to pay taxes in it. The government created an artificial demand mm -hmm. for the dollar. Yeah. There's no demand for Bitcoin. There's a demand for groceries. There's a demand for shelter, right? There's a demand yeah. for these needs. People don't care. Your yeah, average but money person doesn't buys care. Those things. Yeah, money buys those things, and they want the most liquid money there is. Mm -hmm. And right now, but the most liquid money. But that still holds its value. No, no. That you don't need to hold. If if I pay you today, yeah, and you're you're gonna you're in most countries, right? We'll we'll dollarize the term, so everything will be in the dollar cost. That I'm going to use for an so example. It's fairly stable. Is that what you're saying? Well. It's stable enough for the short term, mm -hmm. right? If if you work, if you're a working mother in Guatemala, mm -hmm. right, and you make a hundred dollars a week, which is probably even higher than so <laughs> actual, yeah, it's accurate. Yeah. Okay, so if you make a hundred dollars a week, even less, and then or less, right, and your bills for the week equal ninety to ninety nine dollars or a hundred dollars mm -hmm. a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not thinking it. about future spending beyond that week. You're thinking daycare, something for my kids, yeah. groceries, rent, transportation right. to do get next week's hundred dollars. Yeah, money. You're for not survival. thinking about three weeks from now, five no. months from now, six years from now. You don't need money that holds value into the future. Mm -hmm. You need money you can use right now, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm like, Bitcoin doesn't provide that yet. Theoretically, you can do things like lightning, but we've seen this in El Salvador at this point. People aren't using it no. for their because they're used to the dollar. They don't have a need mm -hmm. for it. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah, the, the only time I use Bitcoin like to buy something is is just to like, you know, just um, to be cool and like, like clout. yeah, like you know, like <laughs> oh, we're doing this, yeah. but it's not really like I want to spend it. Like yeah. I don't. <laughs> like to me, it's like okay, do you take USDT or do you take USDC? Because like I don't want to spend my Bitcoin. It's just the same. Like for example, you buy gold and you buy silver, right? Mm -hmm. What do you do with it? Do you like sit do you on use it? it? <laughs> you, you sit on it. Yeah. You sit on it. You're, yeah. you're not you're not selling it. Even right. though like uh, gold is it's at a all time high too. Like this yeah. year. But you're not even thinking, oh, I want to sell it. I don't even it. watch the price, Yeah, you don't even either. watch the price, and you don't want to sell it. Even, even if you it. see it at $2,500, yeah. you're not going to sell it. So it's the same thing, it's the same case with, um, with Bitcoin. So then, okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, but then why? Like if you go to the store, I'm sorry, yeah. if you go to the store, and you're like, you have so much gold, mm -hmm. like do you think they're going to take your gold? They're not going to take it. You have to sell it. And then yeah. you go with the fiat and you and you buy it, but like the the use case for gold, like the, it has utility on on you know the iPhones and like they use silver for yeah. things, but that's it. Yeah, I understand <laughs> that. I guess I guess my question, I that kind of helps like spark this is, okay, so you guys did for the Super Bowl Bitcoin squares. Yep. And Satoshi Squares. Satoshi Squares. That's Get right. on board for next year. Satoshi Squares. <laughs> yeah, for the Super Bowl. Shot. <laughs> and <laughs> shout out to Breakfast Burbies. <laughs> um, and I, maybe I just misinterpreted or misheard, but I thought that like you guys were doing that to like um, inspire adoption, or maybe I maybe I misunderstood it, and it's maybe it's more to inspire people to get started. So like we are not. We are not what is it? Uh, one of those major gambling, you know, king, whatever the gambling stuff that's all going around, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. You know how you can gamble on games now for everything. You download the app, everything. they're gonna give you two hundred bucks. Oh, like DraftKings. Like DraftKings, oh, okay. right? We're not DraftKings. Even okay. when we do when we do Satoshi Squares, <laughs> right. we're not pushing that out to ten thousand or right. ten million no. different people. There's like. 30 of us. Yeah. Right? So what it is, is yes, it's a way to normalize Satoshis as a concept, as a money, and Satoshis not whole, not Bitcoins, but actual units that are Smaller more than, tangible yeah. than what you would actually be transacting in. Right. Um, but that's part of it. And then the other reason is, you know, I'm an educator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I get behind the concept because... I'm used to the technology. It's, it's one of the dynamics we have here at this show, right? Mm -hmm. 
there are things that I start to feel become so second nature. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's not a good topic or that's <laughs> it's simple. I can just say yeah. this. Yeah. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. That's yeah. complex Back in it and of up. itself. Yeah. Um and Satoshi Squares is a way for us to see like the first year we did it, I was like, All right, we're gonna you have to give us Satoshis and you'll win Satoshis. Right. Right? And then everybody was like, let me just give you cash. Let me just give you cash. Let right, me just give you right. cash. So already the onboard, I can see, I right, people don't know how to get Satoshis. Right. So let me figure that out mm. and help people do that. This year, it was everybody paid in Satoshis. Right. But everybody didn't know how to get paid back in Satoshis. Right. Yeah. And so we had to learn that process. And that's helping us find strengths and weaknesses in the Lightning Network. It helps us find strengths and weaknesses in how we talk about it. It helps us find strengths and weaknesses across the board. Right, but if adoption isn't necessarily important, I don't know if that's the correct word. It's not the correct word. If, if adoption is not um, maybe the goal or... It's also not the correct word. Okay, something. Adoption, we are not ready for mainstream yeah. adoption because we can't we struggle with 30 to 40 people doing satoshi squares where 80 percent of them come to like a weekly or bi-weekly or monthly bitcoin meetup right mm -hmm. and they struggle mm -hmm. these are people mostly who are already in the space right mm -hmm. they struggle yeah how am i getting Auntie Emma mm -hmm. or Grandma mm -hmm. or Medea, how am I getting any of them? Yeah. And I can't get Bitcoiners in it, mm -hmm. right? This is why it's important. We need it. We're not ready. We're okay, not so, there. So adoption like, is. Um, but I'm just so confused because you said that we don't want to like Bitcoin is to be hodled, held. I said that is a valid use case. Okay, but is a valid use case to also transact in it? It is, but you why? So let's go back. Like, yeah, help go me. back. Go back. Check out the uh, episode on money. Okay. But we'll give you a little hint. All right. Yeah. Money please. has a three traits, right? Yes. Store of value, right. means of exchange, right. unit of account. Right. You price things in it, right? Right. So, why would I price things in an asset that doesn't hold value? Yeah. You wouldn't. Yeah. Why would I price things in an in a, in a, uh, asset that you can't easily exchange? I'm not going to price. This is why things mm -hmm. aren't priced in titanium mm -hmm. yeah. or gold, <laughs> yeah. right? They're not a good means of exchange. Okay. And if it, why would I want to exchange something yeah. that doesn't store value? Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's Safe Dean who uses like the banana it, it peel. Doesn't make sense. You can yeah. use banana peels for saying, money, okay. but they don't hold value mm -hmm. going forward mm -hmm. in time. Why would I? Are Why you saying that? that it's not easily exchanged, so we're not ready yet? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying. I'm just trying to understand. <laughs> yes, this this was the the path I was leading okay. up to. You're not going to price things in Bitcoin yeah. if it's not easy to exchange in Bitcoin. Right. You're not going to exchange things in Bitcoin if it doesn't hold its value. Mm -hmm. Now we're getting to the point where it's establishing itself as a solid store of value. Oh. Twelve years running now, You're like, it's the like number love. one store of value of every asset class known to man. When you say hold its value, do you mean like kind of like level out a little bit to where like you would want to spend no, it because it's no, not no, no, no. shooting to the moon? That's, no. that's getting rid of volatility. I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> This yeah, is... so, so some people don't care about about the, the price action. Like that's what I was trying to explain to you. Like I don't care. You know, like I don't care about the price action because to me, like I don't even like the Lightning Network. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I I don't use it. I don't want to use it. Um, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, you know, like I, I know it's cool. Like you know, yes, people it's are cool, gonna come for you. But I don't. <laughs> no, 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 he's no, actually no. in the sort of the majority at yeah, this point. Yeah, I, I oh, don't. Really? I, do, I don't like lightning because to me, like it doesn't make sense. I don't want to transact it. I don't want to give it to you. I don't want to sell it. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to do anything with it. I want to keep it, and I don't want the government to know my address. I don't want you to know my address. I don't know. Like, no, I don't want anybody to know my address. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Check out our uh, notes for Brian's address. We'll be in the uh, additional yeah, bonus content. Notes, you, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I, I don't, I don't care about you know transacting. I don't want to buy a pizza with my Bitcoin. If 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 wow, they have the right. option, if they have the option, that that's cool. You know, like 
that's cool yeah. but it's not something that i'm looking into like oh i want to do it I, if yeah. i do it it just so i can take a picture and like oh this is fun yeah. and like but i don't want to spend it is it kind of <laughs> like like if you could get on a like on a private jet you would but you're not going to do that every day because that's just ridiculous <laughs> you, would do it to, you would do it to take pictures of it but like I think it's it's a, a thing of one of the reasons why um, Brian isn't spending it, Michael Saylor isn't spending it, you know, most people don't spend it. Mm -hmm. It's an investment product for most of them. Um, one reason is because they're working for dollars. And then they've expended, remember, I, I like to always use the proof of work. Working is proof of work. I've extrude work, dollars, or whatever you get paid in is proof that you've done that work. Yeah. I like to, you're going to take that, you want to, I can't spend it today. Brian might make $1,000 today. Mm -hmm. He can't spend it today. He needs, but he doesn't want to lose value, that, right. that purchasing mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. right. Dollars suck mm -hmm. at preserving purchasing power. So he's gonna find something else, he chooses Bitcoin. Now, let's say Brian starts getting paid in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. He I doesn't have that. to worry about that conversion space, right? Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And now, his whole income thing is in Bitcoin. Yeah. He gets Bitcoin, and not only that, but because everybody knows he gets paid in Bitcoin, places like the DTE, our local utility company, and Comcast or Verizon, and his landlord, and the government, they all ex start accepting Bitcoin mm -hmm. for payment. Is that mm -hmm. what that Now be? it makes sense for him to use it as a means of exchange. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if everybody starts using it as a means of exchange, if everybody, if a majority of DTE, our utility company, starts getting payments in Bitcoin, mm -hmm. they'll start pricing it in mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. It's a progression. Okay, but so we're really early in the store of value so phase. So would you say, I guess this is like a chicken or the egg question, <laughs> would you say that being paid in Bitcoin is kind of the key to adoption then? I, I think it's one yeah. of the most important yes. aspects. Yeah, yeah but even, even if they pay you, like if they pay me in Bitcoin, um, <laughs> but I'm I'm crazy. Like I, I don't wanna I don't like I don't wanna pay DTE my Bitcoin, you know what I mean? Like even if they give me the option, maybe you know I can consider it. So you like, get you get a second cash job is what you're saying to pay your money? I will give them fiat. <laughs> but where are you gonna get the fiat if you're being paid in Bitcoin? That's the thing. If I'm being if my whole income is based on what I'm like, you know, Bitcoin I will check the price action. I will be like on top of it. Oh, I want to sell now because like I need to eat. Yes, yeah. it's your income. So you're saying you would wait for when it drops and then sell it. No. Is that what you're saying? You can't wait if you need to eat. <laughs> right. You have to do it now. I think what, he, what he's trying to say, and I think which is a valid point, is at some point, it's not just about getting paid, but also the ability to pay, which is, I think, what like El Salvador is a use case. I think where they went wrong was it, they did it a little too fast in my opinion um but you know we got to have examples so yeah yeah we yeah. wouldn't know this until you do it but they made it they made people capable of spending it but as brian keeps eloquently saying i don't want to spend it yeah. right but if they gave the option let's say to government workers Right here, mm. earn mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. yeah, and then you can take your check. You don't have to worry about converting it to dollars. You can just go to McDonald's and spend right. it, right? Then that starts to align a little bit more. But the, how do you incentivize McDonald's to take it? I don't like the decree, right? Um, you know, this is now official currency. But if you're like, if El Salvador was like, hey, you can spend it, mm -hmm. we. Not only do businesses, the government will accept it mm -hmm. for taxes. McDonald's can pay their El Salvadorian taxes in Bitcoin, mm -hmm. right? That incentivizes McDonald's to want to accept it. Yeah. That incentivizes them to start pushing it, mm -hmm. right? And that incentivizes Brian to start using it. Yeah. And you're, but right now, El Salvador, amongst everybody else, it's an investment thesis. People are moving into El Salvador because they're dollarizing the price. They're like, I can buy cheap land in El Salvador, and it's going to be Bitcoin Nation. Well, cheap compared to what? Well, cheap compared to the dollar. You're mm -hmm. Even the Bitcoiners are still dollarizing yeah. Yeah. Bitcoin, which goes to Brian's point. Right? It's You're taking this deflationary... 
um, currency and exchanging it for an inflationary. Mm -hmm. Yes, if I spend, like like for me, I spend, I use lightning, I spend all the time, but it's more of getting, because I'm in education, exactly. I'm it's getting different. people used to the concept. Yep. It's yep. not yep. a stock. So it's almost you like a can martyr move? You use it. Like you're doing it like for the sacrifice of like your future gains just to get people. Well, yeah, and then there's always spend and replace. Because he's an educator, so the, yeah. yes, he's different. Yeah, but you're sacrificing your future gains just for the fact of. Well, I'm not of, because I spend and replace. Exactly. If I yeah. spend thirty dollars, well, he, he I'm gonna back. go buy yeah. thir the thirty dollars of cash. Yeah. I just buy more Bitcoin yeah. with it. Uh. Yeah, yeah. But it's not something that you're like, oh, I want to spend my Bitcoin. Yeah, it's, right? it's no. a headache. <laughs> yeah, it's not easy, and there's yeah. no way our super producer Chantel is gonna do <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she doesn't. She just wants to buy stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. right? She, yeah. she wants to earn money and she wants to buy stuff that right. she needs and wants. Right. She doesn't have to sit there and think about every time I spend thirty dollars, I got to go make this trade mm -hmm. and go yeah. buy and exchange. Just, just, just oh. like like telling them like you know, uh, oh, you have to download this wallet and like download uh, see uh, you know like this wallet. That's already yeah, that opens, that if you're using sense. lightning, open up a channel. Yeah, What's well, a channel? I mean, like, yeah. Well, you got to have certain liquidity. Well, okay, I put fifty dollars in it. Now I'm ready to go spend seventy five. Yeah. Well, you only have a fifty dollar channel, so now you got to pay an extra fee yeah. to get another twenty five dollars. We're just not in ready it. for adoption. It's kind of like not ready. It's no. kind of like when you want to buy something on Facebook Marketplace and they only want to accept cash, but you don't have cash and they don't have Zelle. So now you got to stop and go do something else. And yeah, who's going to get a money order and doing? You got to really, really want the thing. The thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have Bitcoin economies, mm -hmm. you'll have Web3 economies, you have Ethereum economies, you have Monero economy. Maybe mm -hmm. I want privacy. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin still isn't private. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Especially if you're buying it from an exchange. Mm -hmm. um, you have to worry about yeah. every time I spend, is it a capital gain? Mm. Do I have to take that into account? If, if I'm on business, is there a capital gain in accepting this or converting it? And how do I handle all of that? Yeah. It's just too complicated. And some of these things can't be solved by software. Now, some of it is, this is the regulatory clarity mm -hmm. we need. I don't really care about Bitcoin ETFs or anything like that, but it does start to provide a little bit of regulato uh, regulatory clarity mm -hmm. on some things. Um, but if you were talking about using as money like you, ETFs don't help that cause. It makes it more of a commodity. Right. Commodities get taxed. You mm -hmm. don't tax dollars. How much tax do you you pay your taxes Kinda in tax dollars? dollars. <laughs> no, you don't get taxed on your dollars. dollars you get taxed yeah. on your work. Yeah. You're right. They they call it an income tax, but it's really uh, then, you put up so much work. You can tax all over the place. Like, like actually, yeah. nobody knows. Like, the whole tax system is, is just, it's a mess. Yeah, nobody that's knows. that's a whole other episode. Nobody knows. <laughs> and also, like, I'm, I'm, my opinion is, like, <laughs> I don't know if I should say this, but, like, like, <laughs> like, why are we paying taxes on something that they just print? It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. Well, you're not paying taxes on it. This is one thing you're people confuse all the time, it. like, with taxes. Well, in the U.S., specifically, and this is true in a couple other countries, literally a couple other countries. Um, in the U.S., we used to, the only way the government would get funded was through tariffs, mm -hmm. which is like a tax on imports and exports, mm -hmm. right? Now, we get, t then we got taxed on income, mm -hmm. right? Um, and there's some taxes on capital gains. Like you said, there's taxes on everything. Yeah. But that's the only way the government could raise money. And... For a long time, up until about maybe 30 years or so ago, it was the primary way the government made money. Mm -hmm. Since 9-11 and then supercharged since 2008, right, the modern monetary theorists, and we got an episode sort of on that, so go yeah. check that out, they've shifted the thinking about printing money. If if you're old enough, and if you're not old enough, YouTube it. You can go look at U.S. presidential debates, uh, any federal level um, election debate. It was always about the debt and the deficit, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, specifically the deficit, right? And it's like we can't keep adding to this. Mm -hmm. um, Back when it was just in billions. right spending money we don't have. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right, and the debt. Which went from billions, mm -hmm. you know, when oh, when Obama took office, what was that 2008? When mm -hmm. Obama took office, people were losing their mind because we were crossing like a trillion dollars in debt. debt. Mm -hmm. 
And they're like, we don't even understand a trillion. If you yeah. start looking up what is a trillion, <laughs> yeah. all those videos started popping up around know. 2008 mm -hmm. because that's when that number became significant. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, we do multi-trillion dollars yeah. in debt a year. Yeah, just another Tuesday. It's yeah. just another. No, and literally on Tuesday, we yeah. might spend $2 trillion. That's not, yeah. And taxes aren't the way that we rate that the federal government raises money taxes are the way federal government can rein in some of the money it printed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is modern monetary theory basis print away we are the we we're creating the dot we're creating the monetary base why there is no such thing as debt for them mm -hmm. if you could print your own money yeah. you don't owe comcast or verizon <laughs> yeah. money right who cares how much who the bill cares? is how much is it i'll go yeah. print it yeah, you just yeah. gotta make sure you got the ink just keep printing. Right. <laughs> you know right yeah but you can't you have to pay it in dollars and you can't print dollars yeah. without going to prison yeah. so unless you're the federal reserve yeah. and the treasury department yeah. so you have to earn your dollars mm -hmm. states and cities and counties need to tax you to raise money if you want public roads and police and fire departments mm -hmm. because cities can't print michigan can't print its own dollars no it's illegal for them to mm -hmm. print their own dollar mm -hmm. yeah right so they need to tax you yeah the federal government it's a lie at this point when they're like oh we uh, we got to get rid of welfare because taxes is so much or nasa or lie. whatever your tax dollars yeah. aren't paying they print that yeah, yeah. yep Right, and that's yeah. why they don't talk about it. You mm -hmm. haven't heard that in this election cycle. Mm -hmm. Them talking about the debt no. and the deficit. Yeah, a couple people might throw it out there. Usually, they're politicians who are into Bitcoin, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mostly, nobody talks about that. They don't care. Ain't nobody cares. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> right. So it's it's the incentive of the money and whatnot. So when you talk about adoption and what it takes to adopt, usually it's a use case, and it's it's probably more likely over the next 20 to 50 years that you're going to see web 3 and crypto adoption happen faster than you are going to see bitcoin adoption you you'll see bitcoin used to back a lot of these systems i think mm -hmm. um because like when you think about areas like DeFi, um anything dealing with finance you still need a sound monetary base mm -hmm. and if you're not crazy you're not dollars are liquid so stable coins are the thing mm -hmm. but how much longer is that? That's probably only got another 20 to 50 years left in it at best, right? So you're going to try to find something more sound to back these systems with Bitcoin. Seems like the good answer. And for your average user, you'll know it happened because they'll be spending Bitcoin and don't realize they're spending Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. They don't realize this thing is backed in Bitcoin. Just mm -hmm. like for Web3 to succeed, the only you won't know you're using Web3. You'll just interact with a website differently you're like oh i don't have to have a password and username anymore yeah. i just use this this uh browser extension and click like, okay for, and it lets me in oh, because that's web three like you're we signing a cryptographic thing well like we don't know we're using like web two essentially we like, just know like, we're using the internet right. for example for example now with the with the etfs um like i think that helps adoption but at the same time like nobody like nobody's using the etfs to like transact you know to buy things it's just the adoption so people you know like people can allocate some of their money uh, into this but you know it's not it's not like it's you know like adoption like we're using it so you're saying more like to warm people up to getting used to seeing Bitcoin and potentially its price. For example, the people the people that are buying these ETFs it's you know, people with a lot of money. It's not like people like you normal people. Because they allocate like one percent, two percent of their money. So that's like you know, it's nothing for them. Mm -hmm. It's a lot for us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's nothing for them. And they, they are doing it not because oh I wanna go buy my groceries with Bitcoin. They're mm -hmm. doing it just as a way of preserve their wealth. Um, and there's only one class of humans who want to preserve their wealth, and that's the wealthy. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. And wealth mm -hmm. is subjective. Mm -hmm. I'm not wealthy in an American standard, mm -hmm. but, but in Guatemala, move, exactly. mm -hmm. you're rich. I'm you're the king. In, yeah, you're I'm rich. a Michael Saylor status yeah. down there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? So, yeah, it's, it's just understanding where you are. And... You get so passionate about 
whatever it is you're passionate about with Bitcoin, crypto, or whatever, you want to see everybody else do it, but they're not ready. Yeah, iPhones. Apple came out, if you, I can't remember what it was called. They had a version of the iPhone in like 96. Wow. The world wasn't ready for the internet in 96, mm. let alone the iPhone. Yeah. And so, of course, that flopped. Mm -hmm. They redesigned it, repackaged it, and that then when the world was ready, when the, and the only hump they had was touchscreen, mm -hmm. then the world was ready. But that was like 10 years later. You know yeah. what I mean? It takes time. We're not ready. The technology's not ready. This is why we do the Satoshi Squares. We realize as much as I use Lightning, it's easy once you are in the system. It. Yeah. And let me say, just on the reverse side of that, uh, fiat systems aren't easy either. We're just used to that hardness. Yeah. Have you ever opened a bank account? Yeah. I've been opening bank accounts since like the 90s, mm -hmm. right? when it would take maybe 10 minutes to open a bank account, it takes no less than an hour. You have to make an appointment to yeah. open a bank account because it literally is like an hour, hour and a half process. And give paperwork. You gotta yeah. do all the paperwork and the KYC yeah. and the mm -hmm. AML, which mm -hmm. has never done any good, mm -hmm. right? Um, it doesn't do what it was intended to do, mm -hmm. besides make your life harder, similar to like, oh, we can't have any more planes fly into buildings, so yeah. go to the airport now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wait, so so what if we <laughs> yeah. had like... Which does nothing to stop guns and ammunition nothing. and things getting into yeah. onto airlines. Yeah. yeah. So, and they use knives. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't use guns or yeah. explosives. Yeah. But yeah, go ahead. Nail clippers. <laughs> right. Um, so what if we had like Bitcoin, like brick and mortar banks where like people could come in and like set up their account, like their bank account, their crypto account, and like have somebody there who like onboards them? This was one of the original ideas of Bitcoin. Uh, Hal so Finney smart. started talking about it, <laughs> and it's seeing a second rise as we talk about how does Bitcoin scale. Um, you have um, eCash. Um, you have, I think it's called uh, Cashew. Um, there's a couple of these systems that are built on, like, Chom. Um, principles of like a a, a, crypt, a Bitcoin bank where the banks are built, they hold Bitcoin in reserve. It's the exact same system we have now. Mm -hmm. The only difference is it's backed by Bitcoin, not the goodwill and faith of a government. Yeah. And because it's backed on Bitcoin, there's a level of transparency there that you can that you can utilize that's never existed before. So bank runs become less likely because you can just look at your bank's um, so it'd be like a better so like if you were a new bank that wanted to emerge um, you could you could make the claim that you could say like okay our bank the money is backed by Bitcoin for, yeah by Bitcoin well, and then that's a more trusted bank correct well it's a more trusted bank but it's still a trusted bank and this is where the debate comes through yeah. do you want absolute trustless permissionless access to money at all times or is trust okay sometimes and that's sort of the debate I've sort of stood on the second half for yeah. me. Trust is okay. For ninety percent of my wealth, I need it to be in a trust list where I don't have to trust anybody. Mm -hmm. But for your scaling and transaction, for buying my beer, my coffee, and <coughs> breakfast I bourbon, have, I have a little trust is okay. I have another uh, example of uh, utility in, in Bitcoin. Um, so I don't know if you guys know what happened, uh, like what's been happening in Haiti. You know, yeah, it, with yeah. the uh, like okay, so yesterday, <laughs> get out of office or take yeah, over. So, yesterday, they're like they own the country now, you know, mm -hmm. the gangs and they uh, I think they eat people, something like that. That's crazy. Wait, yes. what? I, yes, I haven't heard yes. them eating people, but who yeah. knows? <laughs> it's, it's crazy in Haiti. So, okay, so I have people in my group that they're from uh, Dominican Republic, mm -hmm. which is like you know, the na their but, neighbors, yeah. Um, so these guys are telling me, hey, you know what? We put all of, and this is normal people. This is not people with a lot of money, normal people. We put all of our money in, in, into Bitcoin just because we think that this is gonna, you know, scale. And like, these guys are gonna come here and the only way we can preserve our money, they're not thinking on, on like, oh, Bitcoin's going to 100K and I make money. Mm -hmm. They're thinking if something happens, 
at least I have this. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're not, oh, I want it to go up so I can make money. No, if something happens, I have this. And this is utility because this is not rich people, like I'm telling you, this right. is normal people saying this. And people, like the good people from Haiti, because you know, it's bad over there, but that doesn't mean everybody's bad. Right. right. So these people, they're, they're fleeing their country and they're not taking gold. They can't take gold. Like where? You know what I mean? Right. Like how? Or dollars. Or dollars. <laughs> like they're yeah. taking Bitcoin because that way, if they go to the border of Dominican Republic, they can say, oh, we don't have any money. Yeah. But they do. <laughs> yeah. Bitcoin is the only thing, crypt, Bitcoin is the only thing you can custody in your brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can't custody gold, dollars, credit. Visa, mm -hmm. yeah, you can't mm -hmm. you can't custody mm -hmm. that in your brain, and this is it's crazy because this is is happening like right now, like yesterday. Somebody told me this, and people that live there, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. so, that's that's the utility. So would you so would you say to increase adoption? There's I have three things that we've talked about written down. I have being paid in Bitcoin, making it easier to transact, and regula regulatory clarity. Those are the first steps. Yeah. Like the be first beginning, maybe. Start. First beginning. Your average human, as we wrap up, yeah. you know, we got a couple minutes, but it, the average human, right? It, whether you're talking about gold standards, grain standards, fiat standards, whatever standard, 95% of the population or more did not realize the transition between those standards. All they want to do is be like, look, this is what I was given for work I've done. Mm -hmm. This asset. Mm -hmm. I need to buy groceries. Right. Can I? Yeah. They don't give a shit what backs it. Yeah. No. Most people, I think, today still in America, at least half, still think it's backed by gold. Mm -hmm. yeah. They don't care. Does it work when I need to use it? Right. That's all that matters. Yeah. We're not there with, with, with Bitcoin, definitely, and we're... Maybe closer, but not there with Web3 stuff either in crypto. Mm. We're not ready. We mm. haven't figured out the technology. We're just over in, uh, excited about yeah. it. All. Yeah. So, like, yeah. so I guess, the, I guess that then you could say to increase adoption, you could just go to a meetup and learn more about it. Go to a meetup. And work on spreading the word about uh, what it is. I'll tell you exactly where you can go. <laughs> if you want the financial aspects, yeah. you can check out a Discord of Crypto Sharks. Yeah. Right? Isn't that a thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do All they, right. is it like an at Crypto Sharks or like what? Oh, they can just uh, look it up on Discord, Crypto Sharks, and yeah, that, that's us. <laughs> so you can go to Crypto Sharks and get more of the financial part, and then you can definitely check out DetroitBlockchainCenter.org. We do the meetups in Detroit area. We have content and blog stuff available for anybody anywhere. And then you can listen here at The Blockument. And mm -hmm. where can they check that out? <laughs> we are at The Blockument on Twitter or X, whatever, you know. Can I ask choose. just one more question? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you want us to be ready for adoption? I, I want us to be ready, yes. yeah. Okay. I, I don't. No. <laughs> because 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 for me it's like not yet. I'm you're not, saying I'm not ready. You're I'm saying not, not yet. Okay. I I, I, I want more. He's got more bags. He's got. <laughs> yeah. Right. So 